Hello and welcome to the Elevate Your Life podcast. We are doing episode number 98 today, Cheryl. Yay, and it's a really fun one, Paul. I love this. I really love this topic. Yeah, so we just got off a series of kind of going around a circle, the success circle of thinking about, well, there was thoughts and there was emotions and then actions and actions lead to our results. And then we talked about last Tuesday, we talked about beliefs you know, and how those are really Ah. the driving force in life. Um, So when we were talking about, well, what should we do next as a kind of a follow-up over that circle, it just made sense to talk about identity because, you know, these, this, this one today is, is, is just as important as any of the other ones we just talked about. Yeah. So the strongest force in the human personality is the need to remain consistent with how we define ourselves. Now, Tony Robbins said that, and he has um, done a ton of research in this area. Mm -hmm. And so let me read that again, Paul, because I think it's so important. And I want you guys to, it is, it is everything. And I want you guys to think about, if asked, how you would define yourself. So the strongest force in the human personality is the need to remain consistent with how we define ourselves. And so, Paul, you and I were talking a little bit earlier, and I was like, gosh, I wonder what people would say if I just asked them, well, define yourself. Give me three things that define you. And so I was thinking about it, and I'm sure that most of the people that I asked, they would say, well, I'm a mom. I play tennis and I'm a wife. Yep. So those are the three things or those are the three ways that they would define themselves. But as you and I were talking, it is so much deeper than that. It is so much more. That's all. Those are all true things, but um, there's a, there's a lot more to it. Um, So what we've seen, Cheryl, um, and we talked about this before, when we talked about the six human needs on on an earlier podcast, that the number one need people have right now and have had forever is certainty. You know, they want to live in the box. They don't want to do uncertain things because that's risky. Be safe. Be safe. safe. Wear a mask. Be safe. Yeah. Yeah. Be safe. So um, we live in this very uncertain world now, right? We got out out of COVID. There's inflation. Gas prices, $10 for a gallon of gas. I mean, there's crazy things going on. So everything's very uncertain. So we are not certain about so many things in the world today that the one thing I do know is who I am. Well, that's awesome, Paul. And let me talk about this for one second is I think that this uncertainty in the world is causing depression. Yeah. And it's causing, I mean, we were just talking about how um, I think Zoloft or whatever is up 360%. The three thousand percent. Yeah. What? Three thousand. Three thousand percent. Yeah. Oh my god. Antidepressant okay, medication. So guys, but that just came to my mind that I think it's because everybody's uncertain. They don't know what's going to happen or you know where we're going. What's going to happen next? Well, so so and I and I read your Facebook quote for today, Cheryl. Oh, and thank you. It, you mentioned that nothing has any meaning in this world, and you know, uh, besides the meaning we give it. Yes. So what I really feel like people are doing is they're saying uncertainty means, oh no, you know, that this is trouble and I better, you know, hoard everything, you know. And yeah, we're going to hell in a handbasket. Go buy some more toilet paper. So get paper. ready. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <That's>... <laughs> um, yeah. But so, well, I just mentioned the, the, the Tony Robbins quote of the, um, of like what we link pleasure and pain to no what you just said today about oh the certainty oh the, no i'm sorry oh. the meaning of things yeah um, what, that's so what now the other people are, are giving you know these uncertain times the meaning of opportunity sure that means opportunity Let's make it, it happen going to be new things and new ways to make money and new things to new ways to do things yeah. So again, it's, I think it's the meaning that we're giving things that is really um, 
defining what, whether we turn out depressed or turn out excited. Right. Well, and Paul, I love that you said that the one thing that you are certain about and that you do know is who you are, right? So you're saying that you know who you are, but I think it's important. And, and we know that our identity forms over time, right? But it's important to realize, I think, that your identity is forming whether you know it or not. And I think what happens a lot of the times is we don't, we haven't realized that. I didn't realize it. I was saying terrible things to myself. I was forming my identity without even knowing that I was forming my identity. So I'm excited that we get to talk about like the three things that really do shape our identity. Yeah. And everybody, you know, is the one thing we're all certain about, and this goes for everybody, is that they're certain about who I am. You know, so that's the one thing that we're all grasping onto in life um, to get our certainty from. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so, so there is, like you said, Cheryl, there's three things that we have that shape our identity. Number one is things people have said to us in the past. Oh, I, know, I know you oh, had some things said to you in the past that. Um, that, that is crazy. That thank God you didn't make that part of your identity, but a lot of people do. So what are some examples of things that people well, have told you in the past? Well, of course. And I think that I did make it part of my identity without even knowing it. So you have to become aware that you're doing that and then you can change it. But, you know, it's always like um, the things that I remember still to this day, and it was years and years and years ago, is um, you're never going to amount to anything. You're stupid. You can't learn. Um, you get the worst grades. There's, you know, you um, why don't, oh, you're too loud. Um, you know, why don't you marry someone rich because you're never going to be able to make any money on your own. You're never going to be successful. I can go on and on forever. Right. I mean, I really could. And so, but and, you but guys you have to realize time, make that your identity. Like, oh, well, I'm just, oh, I'm stupid. Of course. I don't I'm know just I'm stupid. Doing. Yes. And you guys have to realize that the past is the past. None of that matters, but that will and has formed your identity until you become aware of that and move past that. Right. Yeah. So I'm, you know, I'm sure a lot of people out there listening have had people say something negative to them over the course of their life, especially when we're young and really impressionable. Of course. Yes. Um, but even today, I mean, people say one bad thing about a person, the person folds like a deck of cards. <laughs> um, but uh, so that's one thing. Number two is the results we produce in the past shape our identity, some people's identity. And this yeah. one I know, Cheryl, we both think is just hilarious. Yeah. I, I yeah, I, I think that it is, it is just amazing. And the, the, the sub question that we're asking is, does your success in life depend on how good your grades were in high school? Well, I thought so. For oh, everyone tells us that. Well, that's right. And um, we saw a bumper sticker that we really liked, and it's your A student works for my D student. <laughs> <laughs> I thought yeah. that was so cute. But you know what? It's true. And I love and Elon Musk has something out a little bit like that. He said, he said, don't get knowledge and education confused. Um, I never went to Harvard, but I have a lot of people that work for me that did. <laughs> right. And I think that's so true. And we can't let what's happened in the past define who we are today. That's the is, bottom is there line. anything that is less important than the grades you got in high school? I mean, it's just that was so long uh, ago and it, it just it ain't gonna no. mean, it doesn't mean anything. No, there isn't anything as important. There is that that's ridiculous, but I think I was in this, I had this idea that if I wasn't successful there. I would never be successful anywhere else. Sure. And I'm sure there's people listening right now that say, well, you know, I was a C student in high school, so I'm probably going to have like a C life, you know, no. just, just who I am. Stop that. You can do, you don't have to have a C life and it's up to you, right? It's up to each of us. Yeah. So our so, decisions determine our destiny, not our past. Um, but the yay. third thing that shapes our identity, which I thought found very interesting in the classes I've taken with Tony Robbins is what you link pain and pleasure to. I was like, really, wow. that shapes your identity? Like that, that doesn't make any sense. But yeah, when you say, it does. I'm not a morning person, what you're saying is you've linked pain to mornings. I don't want right. mornings. 
And I, and I just went through all the things in my identity and I'm like, oh my gosh, he's hundred percent right. Like all the things that um, I am, I'm, I've linked pleasure to. And the, all the things that I don't like that I'm not are the things I've linked pain to. It's, it's just as simple as that. Yeah. Well, I've definitely linked pain to being organized. Absolutely. <laughs> I, but you I can recognize that. that like I mean, that. anyone could be organized. It's just some people associate pain to being organized, to doing to. Some know. people just think that way, Paul. Some people <laughs> just think that way. That's the whole point of this podcast, Cheryl, is pointing <laughs> out that this is just thoughts that you have control over. Well, I like the next one. It's I am not good at following my schedule, but I really like one better that says I am not good at following the rules. <laughs> now that one's not a bad one. Um, I, I think uh, <laughs> rules are more of the suggestions than actual rules. <laughs> um, but um, yeah, I'm not good at following my schedule. I'm always running late. Like Cheryl was right on time today. We were, we were going to do the podcast and she's like, I'm waiting on you. Yeah, so her identity is that I'm always on time. So that is fantastic. I believe it is. <laughs> um, I've, you know, Cheryl, I've always been overweight. You know, it, so as soon as you say that in your subconscious mind, it's just saying I'm an overweight person because I've always been overweight. So what do you think the chances are you being overweight in the future? Yeah. Super high because the strongest force in the human personality is the need to remain consistent with how we define ourselves. Right. You've just defined yourself, not in so many words, but you define yourself as someone who's overweight. I'm a person that's overweight all the time, you know, by saying I've always been overweight. Um, yeah. The next one we were laughing about um, is, is the gym membership thing. I know I have a, a gym membership, but I never go. And we, we came to the conclusion that people really don't say I don't go. They just say I have a gym membership <laughs> to make them feel good <laughs> that um, I have it. I'm, then you got to ask them, how, how often do you go? Well, never, but I have it. I've had it for 10 years. You know. In fact, I can't even remember what gym I go to, yeah. <laughs> but I know I do have a membership somewhere that charges me every month. Well, and Paul, I was like super excited that, you know, each of us can write these things out ourselves. So, right. So you can just fill in the blank with, I am the type of person who blank. It's just who I am. And I'm going to tell you, I tried this. And so I wrote some things down of the, of the type of identity that I wanted to have. Right. So I wrote them down, like exactly what I wanted. And, you know, like I want to be on time. I want to be um, fit. Um, I want to be a tennis player, whatever it is. And it is amazing when you say that these things to yourself every single day, that you literally start becoming that person right? That, the type of person. And, and I love that because I just thought, well, you get what you get and you are what you are and you have what you have and that's all right. But in fact, what we've learned is that you get to choose. I'm going to say it again. You get to choose if you want to live your life by default, which I did forever, or if you want to live your life by design, Right. And then you get to have the type of life that you want, that you've dreamed of, that you've envisioned. That's what you get to have. Right. And I love that it's our choice. And I love that there's things that we can do to make it happen. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, so we, we set the vision board. We set the perfect story. So let's say, hypothetically speaking, your perfect story says I make a million dollars a year. Well, it's super important to come back to identity and say, I'm the type of person who makes $1 million a year, you know, cause it's, it's, so then your mind's asking, well, what do people who make a million dollars a year do? Like what type of person is that? And you start doing the things, you know, we talked about this before with weight loss. You know, if you want to, if you want to be lose weight or be healthy, ask yourself all day long, what would a healthy person do right now? Would they take the yeah. stairs or take the elevator? That is the salad the or the cheeseburger, you know, that's the best. Oh, the healthy person, of course, would pick the salad. Yeah, they would take the stairs, they would park further away, you know, they would do, you know, what a healthy person would do. So you just become you do say, I'm, I'm the type of person who's a healthy person, I do what healthy people do. Yeah. 
And that's another great thing with if, if, if your whole thing is I'm the type of person that makes a million dollars a year. And then your so then your mind starts asking, well, Hey, what does that, what does that type of person do? And you don't know the answer. Then you better figure it out. Yeah. You, does, you do people know. who make a million dollars a year get up at 10 AM? No, no, they're going to, maybe they're going to bed at 10 AM because they worked all night. Yeah. But, uh, um, <laughs> but, but they, yeah. No, that's right. They always get up early. And let me tell you, most of them um, have a workout regimen. Um, they have, you know, they're, very, I'll tell you what it is, Paul, they're disciplined. Yeah. So in, in whatever it is they're doing, they're extremely. Well, to be even more specific, they do hard things. Well, I just said discipline, Paul. That has, that has hard written all over it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, very, very cool. So, so let's talk the, about it, designing your identity, Cheryl. How, what are some I, yeah. things we can, we can say with some things that, you know, an identity we want to take on? Okay, well, I love, I am the type of person who achieves all of my goals. It's just who I am. Yeah, which is the exact opposite of what most people, you know, people won't even set goals because they're so worried that, well, I've never accomplished a goal in my life. So why would I yeah, set another that one? They won't achieve I'm only going to yeah. feel bad. That's right. Yeah. Okay, Paul, this, this, this next one's yours. I don't know. This one's this mine. One. Yeah, because um, <laughs> so I was, my nickname was Tasmanian Devil. Yeah. Because as I went through the house, um, now the house was spotless at the beginning of the day, by 5, 6 p.m., it was a war zone. And um, now granted, you know, I got packages being delivered and all kinds of things going on that are kind of crazy, but I would say, listen, I'll just clean that up later. That was, that was my thing. Um, now I would, but it would take me like an hour because the whole house was like, uh, you know, like I said, a war zone. So, um, and then I know during cooking, like people, you know, I don't cook that much, but I know this is one of your sayings that, hey, listen, we need to clean as we go. Yeah. Because a couple, the couple of times I have cooked and not cleaned as I go, <laughs> man, there's flour all, I mean, you mentioned it oh, and yeah. it's, it's all over the place. Yeah, it's just easier to do it as you go because yeah. then it's not such a, an overwhelming task, right? Yeah, so that just, you decide that, and, it, and so what this happens is we mentioned at the beginning of this podcast that identity forms over time. Mm -hmm. So I read that, that statement. I'm the type of person who cleans as they go. Do you think on that first day that I read that, that I had, oh, I was Mr. Perfect and, and, and cleaned as I, as I went? No, but I caught myself once or twice putting something down that I know didn't belong there. So I picked it up and put it where, where it should go. And then from there, it just building over time now I'm Mr. Clean. I mean, everything's spotless all the time because I, I, I mean, I'll put my shoes someplace that I know they don't belong there. I grab them right away and put them where they belong. Like I will not put anything down that does not belong there. I believe everything has a spot and th this is the spot it's going in. So yeah, it's just, awesome. I've been able to change myself from a person that was a disaster to someone who was very organized and clean. Yeah. The next one is, that's cool, Paul. I'm not going to have that as mine. Okay. Uh, yes. <laughs> okay. I am the type of person who is always on time for my appointments. It's just who I am. And if you're the type of person who's late all the time, just start saying this every single day to yourself. And pretty soon you will, just like Paul said, happens over time. It doesn't happen instantly, but you will be on time. I just saw, this reminds me, Paul, I just saw a license plate. Um, the other day that says I'm late. <laughs> I was like, oh my gosh, don't put that on your license. <laughs> it's like, yeah. That's why I'm <laughs> driving at 100 miles an hour. Yeah, that's right. Oh my gosh, that's so funny. Okay, Paul, yours is the next one. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're the one, Cheryl, that got me into this 5 a.m. club. Um, I didn't. You're doing such a good job. Yeah, I, it's it's actually <laughs> completely changed my life. So I'm, I'm the type of person who gets up every day at 5 a.m. It's just who I am. And it's that was not who I was. Like I like people got up at 5 a.m. were crazy. Like that is it's insane. I would never do that. Um, but I read the book. Joel told me to go buy the book. I read the book, Robert Sharma book, and um, decided that I'm going to do this morning ritual. 
And I do these same eight things every single morning and um, it gets me prepared for my day. And I've literally been a rock star since, since I implemented that. So made a huge difference and, and, um, you know. Really good, really good. So I am the type of person who does the cold plunge every day. That's just who I am. And I, and 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 most people would say, you know, I would never do that. By right. saying that, you're identifying yourself. Yeah. And I, I really consider that, Paul, as the hard thing that I do every day, right? Like I, and I've picked other hard things since then that are crazy that I would never do, but that I just decided, hey, I'm going to do a hard thing every day. So I love to do a hard thing every day. Yeah. So for those of you that do, the, do do the cold plunge every day, you will know what we're talking about when we say it never gets easy. Okay. It's no. a challenge every single time. But to your point, Cheryl, because you've been doing these challenging, this challenging thing, the cold plunge every day, now when, a, when another challenge comes up someplace else in life, you're way more likely to do it yep. because you've conquered this. Yes, completely agree. Completely agree. Yep. Then another one, another good oh, one is yeah. I'm the type of person who exercises every day. I'm the type of person yep. who takes your supplements every day. I'm the type of person who always eats healthy foods. I'm the type of person who, who focus, focuses on helping others. I mean, we can, you can go on and on. I mean, I literally have a hundred things written out that I br- brought on as my identity. This is who I am. And I, and I also, caught, we, I'm sure we've all caught ourselves saying, oh, that wasn't me. Like we did something stupid or that, that's just not something, that wasn't me that did that. Like, of course it was you that did it, but we know what you meant. Like that sure. it was outside your identity. Um, yeah. So you can catch yourself with that. And, and the more you read this, I read it every single morning during, during my um, morning ritual. And like I said, it, it didn't happen overnight. It's not gonna happen overnight for anybody, but over time you start making small changes and you actually do end up becoming that person, whatever you say in these statements. It's just fascinating how that works. Now to that point, Cheryl, there's some things in life, not our lives, but I'm sure in other people's lives, that they're doing that they wish they were not doing. Yeah. So we can actually write some intentional, by design, statements on I'm not the type of person who blank. Yep. And a couple of those, Paul, I'm not the type of person who procrastinates. I'm not the type of person who argues. And it's, you know, I, 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 I just know a whole lot of people where I think arguing is like, they treat it as their job. I mean, it is just something that no matter what's going on, we got to argue about it. Or no matter what you say or what's happening, <laughs> I think that's true. I mean, yeah, both and, of and us, the thing we is, hate to argue and it's stupid. Well, and the thing is, though, is I think people get into this habit oh, yeah. and then it becomes their identity and then they don't even realize that they're doing it. It's like, why are you arguing every time I say something? It's like, what are you talking about? But it's like, oh, it's well, definitely you, a pattern. Yeah. Yeah. You just don't even know you're doing it. Um, I love the next one. I am not the type of person who cares what other people think of me. This is huge because the number one fear is what people are going to think of me. Yeah. Not being accepted. And I think this is a great one for kids too, just to remember that. Um, I'm not the type of person who stresses out over things, who worries about things. Gets um, upset, gets overwhelmed, and overwhelm's a big one. Yeah, overwhelmed. I'm just not is the type of person thing. who gets overwhelmed, you know. Yeah. And then I'm just not the type of person who judges others, which I love because I think, especially in what's going on today, I think we all could work on that, right? Yeah. Even you know. Well, not me, but um, I'm sure I'm sure other people. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Thank you, Paul. No, this is something that we all <laughs> need to work on, especially myself, because um, even though we say I'm, I'm not going to judge you, and then I go on to my next statement is actually a judgmental statement. So it's it's, it's, uh, it's important yeah. to catch yourself when you're when you're making uh, comments about other people. Yeah. So, Paul, the plus one for today is the yeah. strongest force in the human personality is the need to remain consistent with how we define ourselves. 
Yeah, so good that, you know, if there's a quote to write down and, and put it on your wall, that's the one. Um, yeah. And then hopefully from this podcast, you've got um, an understanding of how our identity has been formed over time and what you can do to, to change it. And the really cool thing, like you said, Cheryl, is that you can change it. You know, just because you're like, well, I'm not a morning person. I never will be. That's not true. You could be, you know, you could be anything. Um, so making these sweeping, sweeping statements as I, as a, is formed an identity. You don't like that identity. You can change that identity and at any time and, and, and write out these statements and read them. So we really encourage yeah. you to elevate your life by elevating your identity. Yeah. So that you too can move from fine to fabulous. And I want to say one more thing, Paul, I, I, I think it's so important to remember that you don't have to be what your past was, right? You don't yeah. have to be who you are because of your past, I guess. Or what your anybody past. said about you in the past. That's right. Yeah. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. so good. Yeah, so awesome, Mom. So this was uh, Mindset Tuesday, and uh, we're going to continue on with our leadership uh, podcast on Thursday. So be sure to tune to that. And uh, so, you know, we're going to continue with this uh, Monday, I'm sorry, Tuesday mindset and then Thursday leadership. And then we're going to, so we, there's a whole bunch of things in life that we're going to elevate. So this, we just been kind of focusing on, on mindset and leadership because we feel like they're the two most important things out there, but we're going to venture out into some other things too. So I'm looking forward to that, Cheryl. Me too. To, to widen our identity. Wow. <laughs> I love it. All right. Have a great week, everybody. Talk to you soon. Bye.